through. Um, uh, if you haven't met me yet, I'm Zoe. I'm the environmental researcher at the Bristol Bath Creative R&D. I'm here at Watershed. Um, welcome to the afternoon. It's a bit hot in here, so we're going to keep the door open. We've got everybody. Come see it. Come see it. We've got loads of seats. Um, come in. Come in, everyone. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to just introduce our speaker. Um, it's one of our lightning talks today. Um, uh, um, so, yeah, I've been working with Marcus Bernard here. We've been working and thinking about what does climate justice mean for the creative industries um, on, a, on a project called um, Black Earth uh, Anti-Racism Creative Resistance in the Environment. Resistance, Anti-Racism and the Environment. There you go. Um, uh, so, without further ado, I will hand it over to Marcus. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, so I'm Marcus. I'm a, the project producer on Black Earth Resistance, Anti-Racism and the Environment. Um, just a disclaimer, I did not have time to prepare anything <laughs> for this. So this is going to be a test of my knowledge of my own project and my public speaking skills. Hopefully I'll do okay. Um, so the Black Earth, Resistance, Anti-Racism and the Environment. It's a project that is in partnership with Tiana for Hudson, which is a British African theatre company, and Watershed. It's a research project which um, kind of loose outline was how can the creative sector respond to the climate crisis and the climate justice movement with a sort of like intersectional understanding specifically of the experiences of black, um, brown, global majority, people of colour at sort of like heart of that. Um, I think when we started we had a kind of like idea that we was going to have like quite specific things that could go to industry to tell them about like, what they can do more uh, in, in, in terms of climate crisis. Um, what we actually found as the project came on is something that was much deeper and broader than that. Um, the project started off with a series of workshops, so town hall Zoom workshop, in order to sort of like understand the themes that we were going to explore throughout the project. What we found is that people were talking about climate crisis and climate movement in a much wider sense. Um, so rather than being like really specific about like being involved in say climate activism, we were talking about things like hair, we were talking about our home, we were talking about our sense of belonging and these kind of things. Um, think that and out of this came like a few themes. Firstly that climate justice means many different things and many different people and there isn't one universal idea of what climate justice is. Some of us were just, myself included, were just deeply uncomfortable with even the term justice and what that means and sort of like the many nuanced ways in which like justice is different in different societies. That justice as a term can be quite punitive, that the Indian symbol of justice is um, a blindfolded person with scales and that idea of like balancing like blindly balancing the scales doesn't really sit right when you're looking within an issue like this which has centuries of colonialism and capitalism and racism and all these kind of things underpinning it. I don't think you can really approach it in a completely blind way. Um, alongside that we, we discovered that people were feeling a deep <coughs> sense of guilt. They weren't sure how to engage with the climate movement, what that meant for them, how to sort of like be part of it and while sort of like maintaining productive lives, what it meant for their families out, out in other countries who, who the climate crisis is impacting them in different ways that isn't necessarily the same as here in the UK. Um, and, and a big thing that we, just, we spoke about was just joy and finding joy in like we would talk about creative resistance and often this end up talk about like ways that we can reconnect with each other, reconnect with nature. Um, we held workshops, which these illustrations are from. Um, these are some of the discussions that came up, and people like sharing their experiences of just walking in nature and the sense of feeling of connection that comes with that. But also, just like these, our workshops are all black and brown people, and people talk about walking in nature and being racially abused. We had one person who was walking in Devon, and someone out of the blue came up to them and said, you people breed too much, when she was out walking with her family. Like this is the kind of thing that sort of like alienates and stops black and brown people from engaging with climate movements. And so what we found really um, is that <coughs> what we found really is that actually what's been really lacking for a lot of black and brown people and people of colour is just space. Space to discuss these things in safe ways, space to discuss these things with each other. The reason why our workshops went off in such unexpected and diverse ways and, and we end up spending 
like 45 minutes, 30 minutes talk about hair and the way we racialize is because actually when it comes to the climate justice movement, often some of us have never had the opportunity to talk about these things. We don't talk about them in, safe, in spaces like Extinction Rebellion, which aren't always safe spaces for us. We can't talk about them and say that your local Just Stop Oil meeting, which isn't always a safe space for us. And there isn't always space, places for us to be able to talk about these issues, which impacts us so deeply. And not only do they, these issues, I think, impact us really deeply, but they impact us in quite a different way um, and a unique way. Because we're not just talking about the way climate crisis impacts us here in the UK, but like I'm of Indian and Jamaican heritage and I'm family in both countries, and the way it impacts my family in those countries is entirely different to how it impacts me. <coughs> and so, like when we talk about climate justice movement, the perspective of black and brown people is it's completely unique and different. And there is and it's nuance and it's got a long history of, of oppression and colonialism that all kind of underpins it. And I don't think it's necessarily always safe to go into your local white middle class extinction rebellion meeting and start telling them about colonialism. Um, but actually that's where the conversation kind of needs to begin. Um, and so when we're in these spaces, when we want to talk about how creative sets a response, we, get, we move on to like much wider issues, because actually for some of us, this is the first time in 20, 30, 40 years that we've ever had the opportunity to talk about these things. And we don't just have a year or two of climate awareness to put them to the table. We have decades of racism and oppression and socialization that has to come, come out first. Um, so this talk is supposed to be about how we bring people together, <laughs> and I haven't really got to that yet. So uh, maybe I'll sort of like talk a little bit about that. So because of that, because of what we, we found, the sort of like project just took quite a, an unexpected turn. Um, our workshops focused on things like acts of creativity that people can do together. We finished a day of workshops here in Watership with us all making artistic collages together, just like telling our stories on the floor, like pieces of paper and rice and things like you do if you're like an eight-year-old in, in class. And it was like beautiful and joyful and we all came up with these unique art pieces. We're doing nature walks. We had them in Watford and now we have some tomorrow in Lee, Lee Woods. And um, those walks are about black and brown people, but anyone coming together and talking about these issues, but also just connecting with nature and connecting with each other and being in a space where we can talk about like these themes of decolonialism, but also we can just lean and touch trees and see what that's like and connect with nature and be at one in a safe, an entirely safe space <coughs> where we don't have to worry about um, racism and other things sort of like coming out at us or making them toxic environments. Um, we've put together a green care package which we're giving to all of our participants and going to make available via the theater website. The green care package includes dreaming pillows filled with like herbs and, and that people can like use to help with their sleep and help them dream and imagine. We have like balms for people who might be engaged in like activism which they can use to like soothe their muscles. We have seeds which they can grow and form their own herbal remedies and herbal recipes. We've put together a booklet which creates a miniature version of this project so that people can go back to their local communities and sit down with their friends and families and create a working definition of what climate justice means to them so that they can share some of these experiences of like guilt that people have had and, and, and talk about them and understand them for themselves. We have like acts of creative resistance that people can get, engage in and how in their local communities they can engage in not just the climate crisis and climate justice movements but also how they can just find joy in their local communities. And so what I think this project end up being is less about how the creative sector can respond, but how we can make space for each other in a creative and loving and caring way. Um, I think that, for me, this project's moved in a really unexpected but necessary way. Um, this is the first time I've done a project that is about climate crisis or climate justice or climate movement, any of those kind of themes. And I think that like, when I went into it and I started engaging in these talks, I kind of had a set idea of what I wanted to do. I'm really left-wing, so I was expecting to jam this down like a really kind of left-wing, marxist anti-capitalist kind of path. And actually what it ended up being is just a lot of black and brown people sitting together, sharing stories and connecting, because we haven't had that space before. And so the one takeaway that I think I want for 
creative sector and that I'm taking away is actually we just need to give room and space for people to be yeah, together yeah. to talk about these things. There doesn't have to be a big solution, and I, and I really want to stress this, that like, actually the black and brown people do have a lot of answers to this, this stuff, like a lot of answers, but they're not necessarily ready to give those answers because they haven't had time to just talk about these things. And a lot of people find that there's a lot of pressure upon marginalised people to come up with solutions to things. And what is more important, I think, for us is that we actually give people space and care if they're going to be involved in these movements. Care that has often been sadly missing. Um, so Black Earth Now is a project, I think, about community and about bringing people together. And um, I think that the creative sector can play a huge part in that. But I think we can all do that ourselves by just going home, home and being in, in our with our friends and family and talking to them about these things and start starting from there and just finding joy in nature and connection and trying to make sure that you make space for the black and brown people of colour in your lives to be able to engage with that as well. Um, and I think my 10 minutes of winning it is probably up, so I think I'm done.